My name is Kuhn. Um, I think everybody that is still smoking will come in uh, in a couple of minutes, whatever. Um, nice that you are here. Um, I am from the Netherlands. I live in Rotterdam. And I um, am continuously working to um, improve this uh, short workshop about DIY touring and about building up your own local uh, context uh, and your ecosystem, as I try to um, refer it to, into trying to do what is on the screen. Um, I am horrible with uh, PowerPoint, but my, uh, my girlfriend helped me make something to look a little bit more professional because last time I was just beaming my bullet points from uh, MS Word. Um, <laughs> um, so what, uh, what I'm curious about first is uh, um, how many of you are musicians um, that are here now or working in music or managing or anything? Well, that's quite a lot. Um, this whole talk, or it, it's, it's not really supposed to be a talk, it's a workshop, so um, I would really appreciate if you ask questions and uh, add something or uh, tell me that I'm full of shit because um, I am not here to give like, some kind of ultimate truth. It's my own experience and I think there is some, um, some wisdom hidden in there somewhere between the lines um, that you can take, uh, take out of. Um, and I hope also that the good people in the booth uh, <laughs> uh, can help out uh, if there's anyone who is uh, um, not 100% understanding what I'm trying to explain. Um, so um, I will tell a little bit about myself. Um, yay. Uh, um, I am uh, living in Rotterdam now. Um, I started working in music when I was studying in Groningen, in the north of the Netherlands. Um, in 2003, I became a volunteer at the um, quite illustrious club Vera, um, where um, actually this is the, the first bizarre moment for me, where is a enormous poster of Killing Joke hanging in the in the main hall. So um, this somehow is a moment for me. Uh, <laughs> Um, in 2004, I started a record label called Subroutine, um, which is one of the two things that I work on most. Um, we are a totally DIY, non-profit, um, kind of more like a cooperative with the musicians that we work with than um, something that is aiming to make a profit. We release music from... Uh, the first years we, we did some international bands, but we decided uh, quite quickly that we are better in trying to... Um, basically facilitate our own local scene um, and to get them also more opportunities abroad uh, touring. Um, I put some pictures of the stuff that I did. Um, on the right bottom is um, actually where my, uh, I would say, fascination or love, passion for uh, Central Eastern Europe and the Balkans come from. I have a history in youth work. Um, I did many projects, um, a lot of them happening in former Yugoslavia region. And this is also where I do a lot of uh, concerts and work with musicians from there, from Serbia, Macedonia, Kosovo. Um, it's, it's a region that's very close to me. Um, and that brings me to the next thing. Uh, so the, the, the two main things that I do uh, is Yugo Futurism. That's how I named my company. Um, it's, uh, uh, Yugo Futurism is... Uh, basically everything that I do uh, outside of subroutine, so it's somewhat managing, um, organizing international tours, um, helping out bands to come to the Netherlands, inviting uh, musicians from other countries over, and things like this. Um, that's also Yugo Futurism. Um, subroutine is the label, the band pictured is The Sweet Release of Death, who actually played a lot in these uh, parts of Europe. Um, um, several times in Prague and in actually most recently in Brno in September. Um, we uh, actually, they are also one of the reasons that I started working more in Central Europe because, uh, in my opinion, Central Europe is currently one of the most uh, interesting places to tour for international bands. And for me, it's a uh, somehow also a matter of time until the whole um, commercial international music industry realizes this and will try to um, colonize uh, 
Poland, uh, Czech Republic, uh, and Slovakia with even more bands from uh, Anglo-American uh, music, which of course is not necessarily all bad, but what we're here for is trying to create also um, more of a, um, because there is already a lot happening. There is a lot of various um, collectives and um, festivals and local scenes that I already work with in uh, Prague, in Bratislava. But for me, this region is, um, like I said, it's um, one of the more uh, interesting places to tour at the moment. So um, this is also why I try to spend a lot of time here and meet people and uh, discuss to people and to find uh, like-minded organizers or musicians or uh, music lovers to um, try to work with on, um, on these things. Let me go back to my notes to see if I forget anything. Um, yeah, I also uh, book shows in two Dutch venues, in Worm in Rotterdam and in Oki in Amsterdam, and I um, invite and curate for several Dutch festivals. Basically, um, trying to build a larger um, international uh, infrastructure like this kind of underground railroad um, connecting um, independent organizations and platforms across Europe because this is something that I strongly believe in that this is the way to go um, like I said it's not the fundamental truth that I'm saying it's just how I feel that um, you can make these steps for yourself um, my background also from the university is is that I am um, I studied musicology, um, that wasn't really the name of the studies, it was like art, culture and media on the Faculty of Arts. And I wrote my master thesis about um, music scenes. What is a music scene, how is it built up, what do you need um, to, to, to uh, get this dynamic for a more um, fruitful and um, vibrant city. And I did my thesis on Glasgow. Um, as a city that since um, the 70s, uh, the end of the 70s, has a strong independent culture and has, of course, everybody knows bands like Franz Ferdinand or Bell and Sebastian, Mogwai, um, but also like earlier, Teenage Fan Club, BMX Bandits, Soup Dragons, a bit more obscure, Postcard Records. Um, as I said, um, music scenes to me are like a local ecosystem, so there is certain uh, aspects, certain uh, actors that connect um, on this local context that really create this dynamic that you need um, to actually create new opportunities for musicians, to start inviting bands over to organize concerts. This is basically where it starts if, you, um, if you're looking at the story that I'm um, about to share with you or the, the ideas that I want to share with you is that everything um, within this concept of DIY is about being proactive and not being passive. It's about trying to do things yourself. Um, that's <laughs> what, it, what it means. But also um, there, is, um, there, there is the necessity for action, for a dynamic, to do something, to change something yourself. And that can be anything. That can be a, as a venue, as a promoter, a record store, a vegan catering, anything. Everything is part of a, the specific ecosystem of a music scene um, that helps uh, propel new acts, helps uh, give um, experience, knowledge, contacts, networks to other bands and friends of them. And I would say every city that I lived in, um, which is almost all the larger Dutch cities, and um, also I lived uh, for a while in Skopje and in Belgrade, in the Balkans, is um, I, I try to identify how, how it works on this local scale. And um, most recently I did this um, when I spent some time in Brno um, with the sweet release of that, as I've mentioned, because for a relatively small town, I, it struck me that there is quite a lot of music venues there um, and there is quite a lot of things happening um, on the small scale. Um, so, is everybody uh, like, uh, if, if, if there's any questions or um, remarks, please, Raise your hand and um, we'll try to um, uh, address those. Um, where it all starts, of course, is, is planning and preparation. I mean, everybody wants to, go, uh, wants to go on tour. If you speak with any musician, doesn't matter if you're in Macedonia, in the Netherlands, or in Czech Republic, any musician has a dream or uh, a goal to play abroad because in the end it's um, 
it's about sharing your music with a larger audience, but it's also about the experience, it's, there is adventure. But um, I made a lot of bullet points, and it can be a bit boring, but I think that's the only way I can make it like somehow in my own head, because I'm a quite chaotic person. <laughs> um, um, so when I was preparing this workshop for uh, the Sharp Festival in uh, Bratislava, um, this is how I started. And now, as I said, my girlfriend made it look a bit more professional with the, with the PowerPoint. Um, it's, it's very much, uh, it, it's extremely relevant if you uh, are planning something like an international tour to, um, to have a concept of when do I want to do this and um, at what time and also to uh, um, choose something that is far away, especially now in, this, in the situation that we're all in in Europe um, with the pandemic. There is, um, I am already booking shows now myself in the Netherlands for July and even September, October 2022. So if, if you're looking at organizing something now, let's say for, I don't know, April of 2022 in the Netherlands, it's very hard for me to find any kind of venue that, um, that will still book bands. So it's something that you um, need to think about before. And then when it comes to like a larger um, um, focus on, on Europe, because let's, let's basically look at Europe for, for, for these uh, uh, examples. Um, somehow it's, it's now almost like um, a professional deformity for me to, to look at the map of Europe and think about routing and think about how you can drive from one city to the other. Sometimes in the Balkans, where I did a lot of uh, uh, tours, I even know like, oh, but this is a shit highway and there is a lot of uh, mountains. So it, will t it yes, Google, uh, Google Maps says it's only five hours, but I know because I've driven that, that's like at least 10 hours. So I'm constantly thinking about this routing and distances between cities. And um, if you're looking at your situation here in Prague, and I'm guessing most of you are from Prague. Yeah, I know um, there are some people from Bratislava, but... Um, then you look at the cities that are closest to you. And um, one of the reasons that I mentioned that Central Europe for me is especially interesting is that distances between cities are relatively small and um, also between cities in um, different countries. So if, if you're looking at the situation where you are now, uh, where we're now, uh, basically from Prague to, uh, I don't know, Leipzig or Dresden in Germany or um, to go more east towards uh, uh, towards Bratislava or um, to Vienna or even north to uh, Wrocław, Krakow, Katowice in Poland is all relatively close by. It's distances sometimes of three, four hours, which is on a touring level. These are nice distances. Um, it gets more challenging when you go towards uh, eight hour drives. Um, but this is something that you, that you think about before. Um, of course, some of the things speak for themselves, the budget, um, but also to ask around with uh, other bands in your own uh, network, um, looking at um, that you know that have been on tour or that have already some experiences and try to get as much information about where you want to go uh, beforehand. Um, then, of course, do your homework. Um, you would not believe how many mails I get uh, just asking completely random questions, sometimes even for venues that I don't work for, um, but they see that I announced some concert for, for a touring band and then I get an email from someone, sometimes even from Mexico, like, okay, we want to come there as well. And um, you need to know who you are mailing, uh, basically, uh, at, at the music venue. This is something that, that's part of the research. Um, and then if you're looking at uh, this larger region of Central Europe also, um, there is many options that you can go to even um, like smaller towns or like always have a backup, look at it. If you start in time, and I would say in time it's um, at least uh, three quarters of a year before you want to go on tour, you have the opportunity to um, still get uh, bigger cities and still have several options if it doesn't work out with one city. Um, flexible, proactive. Um, the last thing, um, it's quite it's fascinating for me is that um, a lot of tourists, they, they don't really do that, but if you, if, you, if you make your first steps to another country or um, organize a want to book a tour in another country, the smartest thing to do is to do first 
some shows in your own country and also come back in your own country because it makes it more logical and you can also share these experiences that you made um, with your own uh, fans and community in your own, um, in your own situation. Um, continuing. Momentum uh, is almost the most important word with anything. Like I said, I, I run a record label. Um, if, you ha if you have no money, and my record label and myself also, I have no money, uh, then creating the momentum for anything that you do is basically the most important thing for me. Um, it, it means that you try to build something up uh, and you can do that also if you are no budget or you're a starting band by making a plan for a long-term plan, um, including with your releases and um, the new music, some videos, maybe some new pictures, and you build it up all the way up until the tour. So everything that you do from the moment that you come up with the idea of going on tour uh, a year from now, everything that you do in the meantime all builds up this momentum for your international steps. And um, that is, all of this, um, it's part of a larger and long-term plan, as I said, and it should be also an integral part of um, the, the releases that you do. So the moment that you announce we have a debut album coming out or our new album is coming out, the moment that you bring this news, the best thing to do is already have this international tour because it all adds up and even also for um, organizers and promoters in the other countries, um, um, everything that comes out, every new video, they can also use it to uh, help get people enthusiastic to come to the show. So it builds up and it's much more uh, logical to include all of this in, in these plans that you make. So that's all there. Um, one of the the best things that can happen if you have a, a good organizer um, in any city um, is that they also have their own um, their own local network with press and if you include them from the beginning with all this uh, news and with some like I don't know press releases or new videos they can also try to get it in the local press and um, I've had this experience with uh, a band called The Homesick that I worked with uh, for several years um, we did a tour um, of uh, 21 days uh, across 14 countries. Um, it was a really, really cool experience. Also, they were back then they were 17 uh, uh, and 18, the, the band members. So their whole concept of Europe and being European changed completely over that tour because um, if you play the one day in um, uh, Belgrade and the next day in Skopje and then uh, Sofia and then uh, Pristina in, in Kosovo, um, the local, everything is different on this local scale, even the way that the people that come to the concert dress or how they have their hair or the, the way they're the street culture or not. So if you get local press from these countries um, and you share these in the Netherlands, also it, um, it builds up on your own profile as a band or a musician if you, if you have international attention. Of course, everybody's looking for that is one of the more tedious things of, uh, of the moment is that everybody is chasing the same uh, English uh, music blogs and platforms constantly. But I think uh, also here in Czech Republic, uh, a magazine like Full Moon um, also supports a lot of local acts. Um, for me, the attention that uh, a Full Moon magazine gave, for instance, to the sweet release of that was much more important than some English blog that um, shares uh, 12 new premieres every day from, from bands. And as we all know, um, it was also uh, mentioned in the panel uh, before, um, this hegemony definitely exists. So, um, and there is also some patriotism with the English blog. So, what you don't want is to have some kind of like competition with English bands because in the end, wherever you're from, whether you're from Czech Republic, Netherlands, um, you will always lose this. So it's, I think, to have the local press or the international press outside of UK and America is quite interesting and um, can really do a lot for your, for your band. Um, I'm trying, I'm, I have the feeling that I'm racing through this, but uh, I hope it's somewhat um, clear what I'm saying. 
The, actually, the first time I did the workshop, it was two hours, and now it's 40 minutes, so I also have to race a bit through it, and it's Saturday afternoon, so um, what I will tell you already is that um, I will be at the bar after, <laughs> or at some kind of bar, and I would love to talk to each of you if you have any personal questions, because I know how shit it is to raise the hand in the audience. Um, promotion. Um, it builds on what I just said. Um, the moment that you uh, 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 start with this tour and you have the plan of where you want to go and what you want to do, and, um, everything that you make and all the pictures and the writer and your information, if, if you have that on one digital folder, um, it saves you a lot of time emailing with all the promoters because you can always just link there, put some... Um, I see a hand going up. Uh, no, I will. I will uh, ah, there's a mic coming. Okay. <laughs> yes. uh, don't you think? Well, one, two. Well, oh yeah. Don't you think that, uh, for example, the issue with with the, the local media, for example, like Full Moon, against I don't know Clash DIY, the the British ones, enemy, or 405. Uh, could also be that like the they don't really have the, the international kind of relevance that like like for example there's no there's no international blog or is is there is there some some I know that Full Moon has for example it's it's like quite big in Czech Republic and Slovakia mm -hmm. but but otherwise do you know if there's like any blog that that would be like big across the Balkans or or something? Yes, like that? there are. Yeah, yeah, several. Yeah, yeah. There, there is so, a, so, so there's, because there's they share the language. Um, of course, the for instance, Croatia has no uh, Cyrillic alphabet, but the the language is called um, depends on where you are, Serbo-Croatian or Croatia and Serbian. Um, it's basically the same language with some. Uh, um, there are some differences, but. The, the, uh, traditionally, uh, in, in, in Yugoslav times, they had uh, they built up uh, quite a, a big music infrastructure because the, the regime of, of Tito, uh, after some initial struggles, adopted punk as, as something that was quintessentially part of their socialist identity. So it was not forbidden. The only thing that was forbidden, of course, if you would be too critical of the regime, but in the end, also even that happened in, in many of, the, of, their, uh, of their music. So there was already uh, a big uh, ground layer of mediums and a tradition of um, music blogs, music writing, but also music venues and touring bands. And traditionally, most of the media uh, in that region is based in, in Croatia. Um, there is there is some in Serbia and there is some um, uh, radio stations in Macedonia that I that I work with a lot, but um, most of it it, it happens it, from Croatia, the bit the bigger ones. Um, but to get to your question, actually, I think too many bands and musicians are focusing on um, building up um, some kind of digital CV with with these blogs that you mentioned, with, with uh, the 405 or, I don't know, um, DIY. Louder than war. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it louder than war, at, at least it's not, it's not 100% commercial as the other ones. Um, it, it, it's, to focus too much on, on these, um, in the end, I think, both on the, on, especially on the long term, really doesn't bring that much to, to your band. Um, I feel, that it's um, just reinforcing the um, the power structures as they are because everybody is coming to them, and um, I I think, like I said, they they have twelve new bands uh, uh, coming out on these blogs every day. Yeah, but, but don't you think that, for example, if, if Full Moon went, for example, Full Visegrad, like mm -hmm. uh, added, sure. added Poland and and Hungary, then then. That would break the structure more, for example. Well, I think because they uh, are the only magazine that write in um, in, in 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 Czech, um, I think that's strong because um, they uh, they have uh, um, they reach more people that way on in here and in the Netherlands. Similarly, I mean, it's not a printed magazine, but we have platforms like um, uh, Three for Twelve, Three for Twelve, um, which. I mean, it's still uh, 
considered, and I think it, it is it is one of the it's much more relevant to get attention on that blog in the Netherlands if you're coming to the Netherlands than to have some kind of uh, attention from an English platform, in my opinion. Does that uh, uh, help you somewhat? Yes. Yeah, so, so you're basically saying that that it's it's better that that these things are local, because well, if, because it, they have like better relationship with the. Yeah, but also it's um, it 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 adds also to um, to the development of of something local. Yeah. To have journalists and writers on the local scale is also they are part of this ecosystem. Um, a good friend of mine, uh, Jasper Willems, who is a music writer from the Netherlands, just wrote a book about the last 10 years in the, in the Rotterdam music scene and all the different bands that were propelled and are now some more well-known than others. But it, it's, it's, it's an interesting uh, story because it's his own story as his role in, in, in the music venues, standing in the back or um, also helping out bands with biographies. and. These relationships, if they happen on a local scale, they can build a, a much stronger fundament for whatever is happening in your scene. Yeah, um, yeah like I said, I mean, probably everybody is already reading it, so let's not go past every <laughs> thing. Um, what is um, relevant for me is um, to stay a bit more in control if you're uh, if you're planning this tour, also um, to link everything constantly back to your own platform, so you're not dependent on whatever the promoter does or does not do. Um, you can always at least um, try to collect all this information and to monitor the promotion and to be actively involved. Also, if they are not working, you can also. Um, ask other people to invite people to some Facebook event or um, um, share your own uh, items um, in these uh, uh, online platforms. Um, the press releases uh, to your own national media. Uh, somehow, in, I would say from my own experience in the Netherlands, if a band goes, uh, if a band is very successful in the Netherlands, nobody's writing about it. But if they make some kind of tour uh, abroad, all of a sudden you're taking more seriously. So um, this is a, because in the Netherlands, um, everything that comes from abroad is always more interesting than that comes from the Netherlands. I, I think this might be recognizable for um, some musicians here as well. Um, there is this hegemony again, but also there is um, it's 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 something that I, I don't think it will ever go away. There there is uh, um, that on the on the on the local on the national level, there is always uh, you, you can never be as good as as a band that that comes and that also works through in fees on festivals. It works through in attention in media. It's painful, but there's a reality that is sadly still there. Um, press releases, pictures on tour. I, I am not, by far, not a social media wizard, but um, these things um, it do ma it does make a difference um, because it continues this momentum. So, like I said, if you make it part of your whole plan for the album release, um, you can con um, make this momentum longer. So, if your album release is, let's say, on the first of uh, the first of May, and your tour starts in June. The whole of May, you can share all these, I don't know, the record reviews, uh, um, and I don't know, any any kind of news that is part of, of your album, but also with everything you add the tour dates and that it's coming up because you can stretch the attention span of, of your own audience, but also the audience that doesn't know you by doing this. And it is basically costless. That's, that's part of this planning and momentum. Um, yeah, the tour book, it's something that I will uh, return to. Does everybody know what a tour book is? I will explain. Uh, it's something, uh, uh, like I said, I am extremely chaotic, uh, especially in uh, administration. Um, the tour book is quite fundamental if you're doing a longer tour, if you're on the road. Um, it basically consists of uh, a collection of Basically questionnaires, it's on one A4, which you send to the promoter and ask them to send back. And on this tour book, on, on this one A4, you collect everything. Okay, what time do we need to be in, uh, in uh, Bratislava? 
um, what is the address, where do we sleep, uh, what is the Wi-Fi code, but also um, uh, the information about your uh, dietary wishes. Um, we are vegans. Um, it's, it's really the best way to have all this information physically. Um, of course, you can do it on your phone as well, um, but I like physical, as you can see also with my own papers. Um, uh, it's, the, it's the easiest way to collect all this information and um, it also makes sure that every day, the moment you wake up on tour, you know at what time you need to leave and um, at what time you need to be there. It's, it's uh, very necessary and very handy. Continuing, paperwork. This is something, it, uh, uh, many of these things come directly from my own experience organizing tours in the Balkans. Um, Balkans, of course, is outside of the Schengen zone, so you have a lot of more things to think about when you organize it there. Um, uh, of course, the, the parking, I don't know if it's also here, but this year, in this most shitty period for musicians, Anywhere with the pandemic, uh, uh, I've read more stories about uh, vans getting robbed and instruments getting stolen than any, any other time in my life. It's really unbelievable. Like this week, there was in, in the Netherlands a touring soul artist that I think they were in McDonald's or something for half an hour and like the whole van was empty. And I, it's a tragedy, of course, because it really screws up all your plans and um, most of the musicians are not rich enough to replace everything uh, uh, on the spot. So um, the parking, the safe, secure and free is, I think is maybe even the most important thing when you're on tour. So always like uh, um, be aware of this uh, situation. Um, merchandise, um, the prices. Um, I, yesterday when I arrived here, um, I completely forgot again that um, there is still um, the Czech crown here. <laughs> Uh, when you're on tour, um, it's smart to think about, um, to ask, for instance, the support act what a normal price is for like a vinyl or a CD and try to work also with that. And that means also that if you're in Albania or Macedonia, um, you have to go down maybe on your original price. But I always think it's better to have the music with the people that were at the concert than to bring it all back home. Um, and um, so the local prices, uh, special merchandise, it speaks for itself. Passports, car paper, uh, Ata Carnet. Um, Ata Carnet, does, did you, have you ever heard about this? Yeah, maybe the, the, the people that already did some touring. Yeah, but Ata Carnet is something that now also the English uh, are confronted with because they're out of the EU. It's uh, an official government document uh, from your own uh, Chamber of Commerce in the Netherlands, you get it there. Um, that lists um, ownership of all the equipment that you have with you. So, uh, like literally down to the drumsticks, basically. Um, so every guitar amp, every guitar, everything is noted on there. If you are considering touring in the Balkans or even, I think, with uh, Ukraine, maybe, I, I don't know how it's there, but Anywhere outside of EU, you need this document, otherwise um, it will um, take a long time at the border. And trust me, I have spent, I think, probably 48 hours in total in the last 10 years at borders with bands in vans. Um, very frustrating. Um, I bribed uh, border offices on several occasions with um, the cups of coffee, um, but it's um, the paperwork and to have everything correct and all the documentation is very necessary and um, it also takes a lot of homework to prepare everything for that. Um, the local currencies, um, the, um, the Bosnian currency is called the, uh, the Bosnian, um, I think the mark, I'm not sure now anyway, but there's a reason that they call it inconvertible mark. Um, outside of Bosnia, um, it's basically useless. So if you bring home the paper money from, from countries. I mean, maybe with the Czech crown in the Netherlands, I can get some kind of uh, uh, change of money, but um, for a lot of countries, it's not like that. Um, so it's best to spend it when you're there on uh, healthy food or um, whatever. Um, the bank card, or basically to prepare Usually that's one person in the band or in the touring party that um, 
does some kind of administration um, that has like, I don't know whether it's, whether it's a credit card or a, a bank pass, but to really try to uh, do the uh, shared investments for the tour with anything, with the gas or uh, with um, a payage, I don't know how that's called here, but um, the, the, the toll boots when you are driving on the highway, you have to pay for the highway, this kind of expenses. It's best to have that in one person. Um, touring subsidies in the Netherlands, there is quite a lot. I don't know if they are here, but um, it definitely is useful to research it. The sound person, blah, 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 blah. It speaks for itself. Um, the last three points. Um, I think it's uh, um, when, when you're organizing something and you're on tour and your Monday is off, um, and you have to get a place to stay, or it, it costs a lot of money. So what I did, uh, and what I still do in the Netherlands, I ask um, in cities that didn't work out, I ask local musicians, uh, hey, can you help out? Uh, they have their own practicing space, a larger space, just to do a, a small, like, informal gig um, on a Monday or a Tuesday uh, on donation. And usually for touring musicians, these shows are really the nicest, because you really connect also with the musicians that practice in this space and it's automatically because it's so small you you have a much nicer connection because actually it's probably one of the only shows that you do that is packed <laughs> uh, in a practicing space um, and it's a very strong last last minute solution if you are um, missing specific dates um, so donations, and you have to ask the people for it because uh, otherwise they won't give it to you. Um, <laughs> um, we come to the last slides now, um, with, uh, where I compiled a list of uh, do's and don'ts. Um, there is a question. Like it's, it's it's a very nice that you mentioned that the free show is a thing you need to do. Also, like when we were there talking about it, it's really essential to sometimes do it when you plan a show and you have a free day. And there in the town that you might go through, it's a show. You can, with your band, come to join the... Yeah, yeah to hop on existing yeah, dates. On for, for free money, because you, you're going to sleep somewhere and you're going to have a for dinner and no, definitely. sleep space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's like super cool. I, uh, the most recent yes. tour that I did. It's already done. Yeah, no, no exactly. Now, the most recent tour that I did was with uh, a group called uh, Jirpa Jazz from uh, the Caucasus region, Nalchik uh, in Russia. Um, and it was just before the lockdown came again in the Netherlands. Um, so already I was working on that for two years because uh, um, the, the Russian vaccine Sputnik is not recognized in EU, so you need a lot of extra paperwork to get them to come. Um, and then on, they arrived on Friday morning, and on Friday night there was the press conference from the Dutch government saying, from tomorrow all shows have to be to end before 8. So that was really like a bombshell, so we had to constantly improvise there. But... Um, I used a lot of this kind of networks, like, uh, okay, someone I knew that had a gallery and um, they, they are used to doing afternoon things. So just try to reschedule everything to the afternoon because otherwise I was stuck with five musicians and um, then you have to also pay for, well, as a group, you have much more cost for food, for accommodation. So um, it's this, constant improvisation and I think uh, most musicians that I know and I'm quite sure that uh, with a lot of you as well um, they all know how to improvise at any moment because it's very much part of being in a band and doing concerts um, yeah so improvising can also be to jump on an existing bill that happens for sure thank you Dominique um, we do, we do. Going to this uh, do's and don'ts list, uh, again, I think it all speaks a bit for itself. By the way, um, you can make pictures, but um, uh, for sure, uh, Marek there, um, the, the slides are in the... Uh, I, uh, Meat Factory has the slides, so um, they can share them afterwards, so you don't have to write anything down or something. Um, 
the I will go through them because each one has a somewhat of a story there also. Uh, I, I stole a lot of ideas for cities and um, venues um, by checking and constantly monitoring other tours of other bands happening. Um, and then you have this idea about, okay, I, we have a show confirmed in, um, in Kozice, um, how do we go there? Um, which places can we stop? And where do I know people that can help me out or that have the, the network to help me think about um, potential routing? Um, the second one, um, it's actually, it's one of my favorite stories, um, the, the Tomek, Tomek, Tomek story. Um, I think I also told it yesterday in, uh, in a bar that I was, I was doing a, a, this tour with the Homesick that I mentioned of, of 14 countries and I was completely stuck with, uh, in between Berlin and Warsaw. I had three free days. And I was struggling, I was mailing all these venues and everybody that I knew, other musicians, it didn't work out until at the last moment I just asked the guy from Warsaw, said, oh, but then the guy was called Tomek. And then he get, in half an hour, I was in touch with two other guys named Tomek that basically booked shows in the cities in between. Uh, and actually one of the guys on Facebook is even named Tomek, 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 so it really is uh, um, quite complicated. Uh, but, um, it, I mean, it speaks for itself, uh, um, locals know best, so if you, if you already have a show somewhere, they for sure know who is doing, a sh who's doing concerts in the next city, or they can help you out with that. Um, so you're not alone, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, be self-reliant and prepared, um, the mattresses, sleeping bags, um, but it also goes for food. Um, if you buy all your stuff in gas stations, you only eat potato chips and uh, cookies for the whole tour. And if you're longer than a few days on the road, this will bite back because um, everybody will get sick or um, um, it, it, it's really s smart. With one of the bands that I work a lot with, uh, um, the sweet release of that, it's Alicia's job every morning, the singer, because she also has particular wishes that what she wants to eat so she goes to the supermarket with the band cart and buys stuff for the whole day and um, then you share it in the van um, and supermarkets are always a lot cheaper than gas stations as well and healthier um, the unpersonal males they speak for themselves uh, don't do it because it's annoying and I actually always delete it also there is a question but it seems to work very well for big agencies. <laughs> for big agencies. Yeah. Even, even smaller agencies that like, like you know, the, all the professional agents that like everybody's doing MailChimp. And I, I know, but this, these examples, they, they work, of course, from the idea that you do it as a band, as, as a DIY organizer. Um, so um, what actually might work is if you... Um, Basically, what uh, uh, what you guys did actually in Czech Republic and Slovakia with not an agency to create a larger um, framework around you as organizers and the bands that you work with because you can use this framework um, to also make yourself look more uh, organized and professional f because you have something that is overarching all your activities. So that can definitely work out, yeah. But if you're mailing as an individual band, it's quite complicated to get through to the right people if you send these mass emails. That's what I mean, but I get your point. Um, yeah, I get added on social media a lot. I mean, uh, um, it happens a lot and I usually I add everyone, uh, um, but um, the moment that you know, you see it already like, okay, I have like that many shared contacts and you know like I don't know this, person but I see they're in a band so the moment you click accept that you get like these messages in your inbox with questions and um, my usual way of revenge there is that uh, um, I am doing so many uh, um, different of these uh, profiles that I immediately invite them for all hundred thousand Facebook pay, uh, profiles that I run mm -hmm. so it's um, um, and then I get more likes it, 
really pays the bills if you have more likes on your on your on your band. But um, yeah, leaving stuff in the van. Um, I mentioned it. It's um, it's really fucked up. Uh, it happens now a lot. Uh, I, I cannot say if it happens here a lot, but. Uh, we're using these examples about international touring, and um, it, it's it's really detrimental for uh, for your band if um, if your stuff gets stolen. Um, and this sometimes leads to. And in the Netherlands, you know, we don't have a lot of space. Uh, we're a small country, so for instance, in Amsterdam, I had the example that you have to carry these vintage tube amps up three of these small stairs in Amsterdam. In Amsterdam, they have these stairs that go straight up. And then with the tube amp of, uh, I don't know, like too much kilos. It's horrible, but uh, sometimes it's necessary. Um, the language barriers, uh, wherever I go, um, I mean, they are there. And uh, um, I've worked now so many years in uh, Central and Eastern Europe, and I myself am also still uh, somewhat insecure about my English, and I know that for every country, that it's it's not your own language. So uh, when on tour, um, try to ex uh, expect, respect, and overcome these barriers um, because everybody is struggling with the language. And um, for instance, uh, France. Uh, I don't know if anybody ever tried to organize something in France, but English is like really very often not happening. So, uh, and, and it's a fantastic place to perform, France, because there's big audience, there is, uh, there's a lot of love for live music, but you really have to think about this also. I know also, I also don't speak French, but um, it's something to, to realize when you're connecting with someone, um, with organizers. Um, sharing equipment, um, if you are on a bill with three bands and you have to build up the back line, I mean, it makes sense. Now, we've all been in this situation um, that you have to share the drum kit. Um, but it's necessary if you want to make the night go smoothly. Um, the local customs, currencies, traffic rules, and spending that money. Um, don't be an asshole to the local support. Um, it's extremely relevant. Um, the local support usually... Um, for them, they are bringing more people in than you do because they know actually uh, um, the local audiences and um, make sure that they get paid also for the show because it's part of uh, a system that in the Netherlands for a long time, local supports, even if the main act got 2,000 euros or 5,000 euros, the local support got 75 or 100 euros that not even paid the, the gasoline to go back. Um, and it's something that I'm actively fighting also with the shows that I do in the Netherlands. It's extremely important also to support this local level um, because in the end also the next time you come, the people of the support band will be the first to buy a ticket because you've connected with them. And it's building relationships um, with many of the bands that I work with. For instance, uh, the Sweet Release of Death, I come back to them because I did the most recent tours with them. They have now a very strong relationship with the Czech band Sinks from Brno, and um, uh, that is, it's really interesting to see how that developed because they're now also musically influencing each other and um, they're inviting each other um, uh, both to, um, to the respective countries and um, sharing bills. And it, I think it's, it's, it's really strong development also because it teaches also, uh, it, you can share these experiences that you have about organizing and um, creating a larger network. And for me, that's that's the reason that I do this, to connect the people with each other. Um, this is also why this setup is always a bit problematic because I would much rather individually talk to each of you, but I mean, we can do it at the bar, but um, it, it, somehow it's even outside of my own bubble or, or genre or uh, our network. I know people that um, work in different genres and different festivals um, that I can connect people with. That a lot of the times when I visit showcase festivals or conferences, I do a lot of that. Just connect people by email. So, okay, I don't know the music that you do. Or I don't know anything about the music or even I don't even like the music that you do, but I know that this person likes it and that he will definitely be interested in hearing what you do. Um, okay, uh, continuing, the idiot check, 
Is that a term that is used here? Maybe you have your own uh, 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 check variation. The idiot check means that um, um, the moment that you packed everything in the van, there is always a last person, a different person that packed, that does a walk around the venue or the place you stayed in to double check. Um, it's useful um, to always implement it with every show that you do because I remember standing outside of the venue uh, Gromka in Ljubljana, it's part of this Metelkova complex, and um, literally sitting in the van, and the van starts, and then the guitarist is like, oh, I think my guitar is still inside, but we had to lock the venue behind us, and the keys were in the, in the drop box, and it took us three hours to find some, uh, some local punk, because we left at 10 in the morning, so everybody is asleep, to find some local punk that had the keys to get this guitar out. Um, this is why you have an idiot check. Um, make your band members take responsibility about their own stuff as well. Um, uh, don't pretend to know more about the visiting country than the locals. Um, it's something, uh, it's, it's important for me also, uh, with my experiences in the Balkans, um, Everybody has uh, uh, stereotypes in their heads. Even if you don't want them, they're there. Um, for me, traveling means also to learn and to grow and to learn about the country you're in. Um, I, I, I see it very often with, I mean, I, I don't want to stereotype them, but with American bands coming to Europe that they have literally have no idea where they are. Like this, this idea of uh, uh, it's Friday, so this must be Amsterdam. And, um, it, it's it especially, um, I mean, I, I mentioned my company is called Yugo Futurism, and I feel very strongly about uh, uh, Central and Eastern Europe and, and the Balkans. Um, one of the reasons that I started is also because I'm trying to fight this continuing uh, concept of um, which still exists in the Netherlands, and I think in many uh, Western European countries that, like, on, on the east of the, the, the former uh, Iron Curtain, that everything is monotonous gray, and, and there's actually, even in music journalism, there are specific, specific words that they keep on repeating. So if you have a punk band from Serbia, they're always wild, because the wild Serbians, this exoticism that is used is something that really annoys me, because I really, I am curious and I'm fascinated with the, all the individual differences of all the countries, like I said. So this is uh, something that is very fundamental to me. Um, also, um, uh, it can also save you a lot of bullshit um, if you don't start to talk about or explaining local politics to the locals because um, in some situations it can also get you in uh, a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, I think we're almost there. It's the last slide that I have. Um, the info sheets. Um, the info sheets are what makes up the tour book that I mentioned. Um, I think it's basically, if you Google info sheet, uh, um, you, you, you get an example, or I can also share it with you later, whatever. But you get an example of the questions and the things that are collected on this document um, that you print out and put in your tour book. Um, and then you will know everything is there. Uh, prepare the technical and the writer. This is the stuff that you put in this digital folder that you share on the first moment that you start booking. And of course, uh, don't be late. I mean, it's a bit schoolish even to mention it, but um, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, um, it's as an organizer also, it's really fucked up if the band comes late because you know that um, there is a planning, the people of the sound also have to eat and everybody's waiting, um, so it's relevant. And uh, don't be entitled or forget to be grateful because uh, the underground is not very, um, financially interesting place to live in. Um, I can vouch for that myself. Um, so the moment that you're part of this larger network also, you're contributing something that is much more valuable, uh, I think. So that was pretty much the information that I put in all my bullet points. Yay. Um, Keep in touch, uh, this is my email address. Um, you're all allowed to add me on social media and ask questions there. I will remember each of your faces. Is there anyone with questions or something that I might clarify or that I was completely wrong about? Because I'm very open for that. 
I don't even know how we are in the time, but I think I talked a lot, so probably it's, it's somewhat good. Yeah, um, there, in the back. Uh, hello. Um, I just would like to share and ask if you have uh, such an experience. I once tried, uh, it, it, uh, it's about uh, safe parking with all the stuff uh, packed in your van when you're, I don't know, to oversleep somewhere or the, um, We tried one time around Czech Republic to uh, call all the, all the local police stations if they don't have such uh, like a uh, safe place or a safe ground in, in their building to park a car there. It worked in half of them, of the cities we, we, we have toured. And uh, if, if you have an experience with, uh, with some similar uh, solutions. I, 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 I know like with the larger venues in the Netherlands that, um, I mean, these are these, um, okay, uh, this is also a huge complex, so but some of the larger venues have indoor parking even. Um, so, I mean, that's the easiest, of course, but when we're talking about small DIY venues, um, I've never been in touch with um, the police, also because um, I don't always have good experiences on touring uh, with the police. Um, we get stopped a lot on tours in the Balkans trying to make an extra buck. Um, but uh, I think similar solutions or to get this information from, uh, from municipality or something is definitely wise, yeah. So you can for sure try that. Um, and the fenced off parking, yeah, I, I know it exists everywhere, but the point is if, you, if you're on tour and you have to leave the next day, of course you would ideally have the van where you're staying and not somewhere else. But definitely I understand the point. If you're in the center of town, it, it, it might work like that, sure. Thank you. Anyone else? <laughs> Thank you. What, what, <laughs> Jackie. Uh, thank you all for being here. And uh, like I said, um, let's have a drink. I, I guess the place will stay open for a while so we can uh, get to know each other. Um, I was Kun. Nice to be here. Thank you, uh, Meat Factory. Um, and uh, get in touch. And good luck with all your future bookings. <laughs>